بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم إني أعوذ بك من الهم والهزن وأعوذ بك من العجز والكسل وأعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل وأعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال اللهم إني أسألك العفو والعافية والمعافاة الدائمة في الدين والدنيا وأهل المال وصلى الله تعالى على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمة كرام الرحمين زاك الله خير for سيد وسيم and Brother Wahid and Brother Shahid and Omar and all the team of KQZ or KQZ, whatever way you like it, <clears throat> for inviting me and being here. It's a blessing being amongst uh, lovers of poetry, lovers of truth, lovers of Mawlana Rumi, lovers of Iqbal. Uh, feel honored being here. Um, and I wanted to thank also the owner of this beautiful art gallery. <coughs> Presenting Islam with a beautiful ihsan, uh, which is kind of getting lost in our communities. One of the uh, the uh, things about the world that is uh, interesting about how this world has some power within itself, and one of the things that this world does really well is that it molds and shapes people based on the time and place that you live. <clears throat> so the world, the dunya, shapes your, not just your physical being, but your intellectual being, your spiritual being, depending on the time and place that you're raised. And this is universal for human being. This is universal for human being. That the dunya will form you, the dunya will make you think in certain ways, because of the place that you come from and the time that you live in. Except for a few people. There are always people and there are always will be people that will come and they conquer their time and their place. That the time and their place will not be able to change them or mold them or shape them. Rather, they shape their time. Rather, they mold their time. Rather, they form their time in their place. And these are what we would call in our tradition, al-insan al-kamil, those perfected human beings that has been there since the beginning of time, and they will be there until the end of time. And in every generation, you will have people like that in order for us to see that it is possible to be one of them. In order for us not to be hopeless, that say, it's not doable. In the year 1207, one of these people were born in the valley of Balkh, in a village in what is modern day Afghanistan. This is before there was a name Afghanistan, but that's how people know this valley where the big giant Buddha, uh, the statue of Buddha is. He was born to a family that tradition and scholarship was at the core of their, of, of their family values. They were all scholars. His father, uh, Bahauddin, he was the, they used to call him Sultan al-Ulama. The scholar's a scholar. He was, he was the alama of his time. And he lived in that valley for about 12 years. And Mongol invasion was happening in this time. So you have to understand 13th century, the beginning of 13th century, it was a Mongol invasion of Persia. And so they migrated from Afghanistan and they went to make the pilgrimage and through uh, Khorasan, what is modern day Iran, Iraq, and then Syria, they made Hajj. And then they ended up in Karaman. They stayed in Karaman for uh, a while, Mawlana Rumi, um, as a matter of fact, his mother died in Karaman when Mawlana Rumi was 18 years old, and she's buried there. And then Aladdin Kikabad invites this man, Mawlana Rumi's father, to come to Konya, which is the, em the capital of Saljuk Empire, and he uh, offers him unlimited, whatever you want, blank check. You come to my city, and I will build you a madrasa, I will do whatever you say. So they go to, Kar they go to Konya, this is the, the capital of Saljuk Empire. Now you have to understand that empires 
A lot of the people don't know what empire is anymore. They, they controlled all of the Muslim countries in their regions. So this is a massive uh, opportunity for Mawlana Rumi's father to be part of this. So when he goes to Qonia and Aladdin Kiqabad makes him the chair of education and Islamic studies of Seljuk Empire. Now that's Rumi's father. You can imagine the level of intellect. This man was not an ordinary person. And you can imagine what a child, this kid, Rumi, whose name is Muhammad Jalal al-Din, known as Rumi. One of the interesting things is, in the West is known as Rumi, right? And the East is known as Mawlana. And neither one are his name. He's not a Rumi, he's not a Mawlana. Like, Rumi is a, is a, is a title because it was Rum Sahir, right? The little room, uh, Turkey. That's what they call him, Rumi. And Mawlana means someone who has mastered the sciences, right? We have so many Mawlanas. But when we say Mawlana, it goes only to one. Everybody says, oh, you're talking about Rumi. Which is interesting. And there's so many Masnavis. Right? Masnavi is not a special book. It's anybody can write a Masnavi. Just means two lines rhyme together, that's it. But when we say the Masnavi, say, oh, Rumi's Masnavi. So these are exclusive what Allah has given him in terms of. But he, uh, he has it, this father that's a complete encyclopedia. And you can imagine in the age of pre-Google, pre-social media, pre-dictionaries. Like dictionaries were rare in the Muslim world. You had to go to a city center to get uh, to a library. It wasn't like you had libraries everywhere. In nations you had a few libraries, ma major libraries. So he has his father who's a walking library. He can ask any question, he can ask his dad and he'll answer it for him. Then, what happens when Rumi is 25, his father dies and they bury him in Qonia. Now, at age 25, amongst all of the people, all of the ulama in the Muslim world, under the empire of the Saljuq, they choose Rumi to become the chair of education and Islamic studies of the empire. I can imagine most of our 25 years old playing PlayStation now. Literally. And now here's a man. That they, the reason why it's important for us that we need to know that he was not an ordinary person. He was not, not a kid from the street. No. This man was dedicated, he was gifted, but he was also dedicated from the time he was a kid, from the time he was a baby. Then he continues his studies, even though he becomes a superstar in Konya. When he becomes a superstar, his classes are filled with thousands of people. Everybody wants to be around Mulana Rumi. He is the king's appointee. He's the chair of Islamic studies of empire. You can imagine he's walking with his, his beautiful cloak and followers and students and everybody's with their pen and paper asking questions. Amazing station, superstar. Then he meets his, this is the first stage of his life. Rumi defines his life in three stages. He says, Hasil umram sasukhan bish nist, khom budam, pukhta shudam sukhtam. He said, I'll summarize my life for you in three words. I was raw, I got cooked, I got burnt. All right? So this is the raw stage of his life. He's learning and memorizing all this stuff. Now the cooking part happens when he meets his uh, Sheikh Tarmizi. When he is in his, after a few years of pass, his dad passes away, uh, one of his Father student Muhaqqaq Tarmizi comes to town from Balkh. He's one of the only survivors of all of the students of his father. They all got killed by the Mongols. He comes and he says, I came to visit my Sheikh. And he says, your Sheikh has passed away a couple of years ago. Uh, I was once in LA at the high school giving a talk about Rumi. It was a non-Muslim high school. They were studying world literature. And I was mentioning this story and somebody raised their hand. They said, two years? Why didn't they send him an email? I said, yeah, 800 years ago the servers were down. 
Uh, but a lot of the young people, they think all of these things existed in the begin beginning of time. So there was SMS and emails and all that stuff. So he obviously doesn't know and he travels, he finds him in Konya. And uh, then he tells Rumi, which is very important. And this is for me, like I've mentioned this in, in, in many places. For me, this is what, what made me fall in love with Rumi was this point. Like I really said, I love this man. Muhaqqaq Tarmizi comes, he, he says, I want to teach you what your father taught me. I feel like I owe you. He starts teaching him and he's like, oh my God, this is a first rate intellect. What an, he can't believe that this man, he's teaching him and he's teaching him and he says, no, 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 you, you, you need to go and study in Syria. Now, here would be an answer of an ordinary person who said, what? You want me to go study in Syria? Do you know who I am? I'm the chair of Islamic studies and education of the Muslim empire. You want me to go study under, under who? I'm the greatest mind alive. He doesn't say that. You know what he says? He said, you're a student of my father, you're like my father. When should I go? And how long should I go for? That humility as, you know, if you humble yourself, God will elevate you. And if you elevate yourself, God will debase you. This is our tradition. So he leaves, go to Syria. And in Syria, he studies, he's there for a few years, studying. Then he comes back. When Muhaqqaq Tarmizi sees him, he said, you're ready to go. He puts him in some spiritual training for 40 days of Khilwa, and then he leaves. He leaves because he says there's going to be a lion that's going to come from Tabriz, I can't be with him in the same town. Two lions cannot be in the same cage. He said, what kind of lion? You are my lion. He said, no, 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 no. What's going to come to you now is another level. I cannot be here. So he leaves. And this is the third portion of his life, that Rumi's life starts from here. When he's 38 years old, a man walks in to the masjid and Rumi is having his class and thousands of people sitting in the class and he's teaching and a man walks in. His form doesn't look like anything. Disheveled, beard everywhere, turban everywhere, cloak is all ripped apart with patches, dirty, unkept. And when he walks into the classroom, he sits, Rumi is giving his lecture on the pedestal and he's you know, very eloquent and coding hadith and Quran and coding philosophy and Aristotle and Socrates and people are mesmerized, right? Then they said, it's time for Asr prayer. They all stand in the prayer. And then this men stand with them in the prayer. Allahu Akbar, they all go to a prayer. Right after they go to prayer, the man sits on the ground, just like this, and he has a sack, he opens the sack, and he goes like this. And then he has some cheese and start eating the cheese. And, and everybody's in the prayer. And they, you know, one of the good things about our prayer, you really can't do anything. No matter what the people do, you just have to wait until it's finished. Otherwise, in every prayer, we will have a fight. It's like, brother, your foot is one inch off. Beat him up. So they, they can't do anything. They're all standing in prayer and rolling their eyes. And they're like, what, 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 what is he doing? Like, is, he, is he a Muslim? Well, as soon as the Imam says, Salaam Alaikum wa Rahmatullah, they all attack him, right? We're so good at that, like the Muslims just attack. And then uh, they say, what are you doing? He said, well, what, are you a Muslim? Are you a Kafir? What, are you mocking us? He said, no, no, I'm a Muslim. I'm Shafi. I study Tanbih. He just started mentioning all the books he studied. He's like, I know my fiqh. I know, I know, I know my rulings. Isn't it what we do, what the Imam does, what the prayer leader does? He said, yeah. He said, I'm just doing what the Imam was doing. That's it. So Mawlana Rumi hears this. So what is the commotion in the masjid? So here's a man sitting down eating cheese, but he's saying he's following you in the prayer. And Rumi says, bring him up. They bring him forward. And he says, what did you say? What was he doing? And they tell him the story. He says, SubhanAllah. The moment I say Allahu Akbar went to the prayer, I was thinking about this cheese that my wife made. I said, when I go home, I'm going to have cheese. And I was eating cheese and the prayer throughout the prayer. And he's like, how did you do that? And this is the bait. This is how he caught him, right? This is how he caught him. This is what he wanted to do. This is why Rumi has a story in the Masnavi. 
And he says, uh, who is hunting who? Is the hunter hunting the birds or the birds hunting the hunter? He said, all of you think the hunter is hunting the bird. But he says, that's wrong. It is the bird that they show themselves to the hunter, and then the hunter goes after them. In reality, he's being hunted by the birds. And that's exactly what he did. He hunted Maulana Rumi. And he went after him, and after that, his life changed. Completely changed. Because he said, Morda budam zenda shodam. Giriya budam khanda shodam. He said, I was dead. I was a dead man, but I was walking. I was muharrik. I was moving, but I was dead inside, spiritually. Like how many people are walking, but they're dead inside? He said, he came in my life, and he gave me life. Because he came with the dominion of love. And he made me eternal. The lovers never die. They never die. People who are lovers, they don't die. Their names are always alive. And that's what he did. What he did to Rumi, he didn't change him, upgrade him, do anything. He made a new Rumi. Had he didn't come in his life, none of you would have known him. None of us would have known him. Like him, another 500 scholars in the 13th century. But what he did, he flipped him. And this is what Rumi told him. He said, oh Shams, what did you do? You flipped me upside down. He said, stay like this. You were upside down all your life. I turned you right side up. Things might be fuzzy right now, but if you stay like this, you would see that everything is perfect. And there are people, I swear. I had one day, I, was, I had a customer in the store that came in, uh, a husband and wife, non-Muslim, they walked in, very posh, Mercedes Benz S500, with a Louis Vuitton bag and a Gucci belt and the whole shebang. They walked in, they said, oh, we saw a Rooney Bookstore sign and we really wanted to see I said, yeah, you've been studying Rumi. She said, no, I, I read a lot, but every book I read, there's a quote from Rumi. I'm like, who the heck is this guy? I gotta read something about him. Because everybody, oh, as Rumi said, as Rumi said, as Rumi said. And so she said, can you recommend some book? I said, yeah, these are good. I recommend a couple of books. And I said, uh, she said, so what was, who, who was Rumi? I said, I'll give you a 30 second life of Rumi. And she said, okay, so I did that one line about flipping upside down. I swear to God, if I had a camera to record that scene, it would have won like an Oscar moment. They both of them looked at each other and they said, have we been living our life upside down? Like they were so serious, it just hit them really hard. And there are people who live their life upside down and they don't realize it until they die. They realize it in the grave. And this is why Rumi says, I'm going to wake you up before you're waken up by the angel of death. I will wake you up. If you just listen to my message, I'll wake you up. Because you don't have to wait for the, for the grave to, to, to be awakened. Ahasabu qablan to hasabu. The Prophet said, you know, do your accounting, wake up before you're taken to account, before you're audited. Do your audit. Mutu qablan tamutu. Die before you die. He said, oh my friend, go die before you die. So you don't go through all these pain, the pangs of death. I'm not talking about a death that you go six feet under. I'm talking about a death that you become illuminated. That you become illuminated. That's is at the essence of teaching of Rumi. As two things that we need to get from tonight's message of Mawlana Rumi and Iqbal, and we'll get to Iqbal. One is that he is trying to make us human being. As di wadad malu lamo in sauna morazust. I'm so sick and tired of seeing all these animals. When am I going to see human beings? 
How many of us are sick and tired of seeing all these animals and the shape of human being? In Sana Marazus, I want human being. I want human companionship. That's number one. And number two is to connect you to yourself. Number two is to connect you to yourself because we are all disconnected, we're scattered. We're disconnected from ourselves. Last is to connect you with your Lord. Not in the same sequence, depending on how you read the Masnavi, how you read Iqbal, but these are the three things that they do. What I want to do is that these people are always there, the Insan al Kamil. Allama Iqbal, 1877, right? In Punjab, Sial Kot, Punjab, which is now in, in uh, near Lahore. That was a great India back then. Born there, 1938, he passes away. 60 years, that's all he lived, 60 years. After his trip, you know, one of the things that pained me, it was after the trip he came from Afghanistan. He got, the, he got sick and he died. I hope the Pakistanis don't blame the Afghans <laughs> for his death, because we love Iqbal. The Afghanis, they love Iqbal. The Iranians are learning about Iqbal now, which is very nice, uh, a little bit, you know, delayed, but it's, it's beautiful. But Allama Iqbal came in, and some of the Pakistanis, Indian, and Afghanis, we know Allama Iqbal as a reformer, as a politician. Some of us we know as a philosopher, right? Because he studied Nietzsche and Goethe, those were two people that really influenced him. Not in a bad way. People say, oh, if you read Nietzsche, you become kafir. Why would you become a kafir if you read Nietzsche? Like, your Islam should be stronger reading these stuff. After, you know, you, because, Rumi is not against philosophy. He's against philosophy without faith, right? Then he reads, he's well read. I mean, Cambridge, right? He gets his master, like this man is a genius. And then he goes to Munich, University of Munich in Germany. He gets his PhD on the development of uh, uh, metaphysics in Iran and Persia. What an amazing uh, paper, right? That paper inspired people to write books, the development of metaphysics in Europe. The, the, all of that books that came in the past like 30, 40 years, all because of Iqbal's paper. And then he started writing. And he said, they asked him, why do you, did you write in Farsi? Because his masterpiece is in Farsi. His diwan is in Farsi, it's not in Urdu. He said, I could not bring the feelings that I had inside of me in any other language except Farsi. He said, everything that I was, because he could have done in English. Could have, he knew Arabic, studied Arabic early on. He knew Urdu, he knew Farsi, like he knew many languages. But he said, this was the language that really could help me bring my feelings onto the paper. And what I love about, Attar, about uh, Iqbal is that his teacher was the Masnavi. So the Masnavi, the book, became the teacher. And this is why I wholeheartedly believe if you go to the Masnavi of Rumi and you keep reading it, it will become your teacher. It will open up like a rose, it will open itself up. But you have to go with it with humility, with dhawq, with ishq, with mahabba, with sincerity, and you have to keep doing it. You know, my brother has done, he has done over 50 khatam of the Masnavi. It's 26,000 lines. Like he does khatam like from the beginning as, as a devotional reading. Like he reads every day three hours masnavi. Every day for the past almost 30 years. And every time he calls me like, I found this one. I said, after like 50 times, he said, every time there's new stuff. Because you grow and it opens itself up for you. And it gives it to you. But Iqbal, the interesting thing is sometimes you read Iqbal and you think about it, wait a second, is this a Rumi or is it a Ball line? You, it's, it's so similar, the ideology and how he was influenced. Out of all of the people, the one that influenced him the most and shaped him was Maulana Rumi. Because Rumi didn't write from his nafs, from his ego, from his desire to get famous, to get popular. No, he wrote it from his heart. And when you write from your heart, your writing becomes timeless. It doesn't expire. 
It would never, we read books that are 3,000 years old, 2,000 years old. Why do we read those books? Because they didn't write it for fame and glory. They actually write it because they care about human being. But one other thing about Iqbal that really impresses me is that why didn't get, why did he get influenced by all the Western Goethe, Nietzsche, all of these people that he studied, all of the philosopher and the teachers. He had amazing teachers. And in UK, uh, Thomas Arnold inspired him and he was influenced by him. But why all of those are so like he had control over and then he just gave up to Maulana Rumi as a master, as a teacher. Why didn't the Western sciences impress him? Why didn't it embezzle him? He said, he said, Khira na kar saka mujhe jilwai danish e farang. Surmai mere anka khaki medina wa najaf. He said, I'm not, you know, the, the, uh, all of these sciences of, of the Western sciences, he said, it's not embezzling me, it's not impressing me, because my eyes have the, the, the surma from the dust of Medina and the dust of Najaf, which is the two source of knowledge for us. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Sayyidina Ali. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Sayyidina Ali, like he's the door, he's the bab of, for the, for the for the storehouses of knowledge and all of the knowledge of the world for us is from the Prophet All of the knowledge. This is why he's not getting impressed by it because he had the real knowledge. And when he saw all of these, he appreciated it. And we should appreciate it. They have something. But the essence, the jawhar, is in our tradition. So here's, I wanted to do some lines from the, the what he said about Rumi. Pir Rumi Khakra Iksir Kunad. He said, Maulana Rumi, he turns the dirt into gold. Tahubaram Jalwaha Tamir Kunad. He did that to me and turned my dirt into this beautiful building structure. Right? We are all made out of dirt. Kulukum in Adam wa Adam in Turab. All of you are from Adam and Adam is from the earth. Right? I'm just a wave and I've taken permanent residency in his ocean. You would see all these moments of ecstasy from you know that I'm doing all these beautiful poetry for you. He said all of this is because I'm living my life based on what he exhaled and inhaled from the breath of Rumi. He lived by, by he said, andar dil nigar. Oh my friend, just for a moment, go inside yourself and look at the universe inside yourself, your heart. So you can be illuminated from your own light. Not from the light of others, from your own light. Chashmi tu bidar bashad yak khab, dil bebinad bi shaay of the top. At that time, whether your eyes are closed, sleeping, or you're awake, you would still see because now you're seeing with the eye of your heart. It always witnesses if you're awakened. On jahan ra bar jahan dil shanas. Know this world. From the world, the universe inside your heart, inside yourself. It's a that qiyas. I can't tell you because this, there's no, nothing I can tell you a metaphor that you can understand this. You have to do an inward travel. An inward travel. In Mawlana Rumi said, Kamari John Sefate Darrahi Dil Paydoshud. Darrahi Dil Chilatifa Safar. Heech Magu. He said, an illuminated light appeared inside of me. And I start traveling, and it showed me the way. Wow, what a gentle and beautiful travel is this to go inside yourself, which many people don't, unfortunately. And then he said, Paykare hastiz asrari khudist. Harchi mi bini is asrari khudist. All of the existence, everything that you see, is from the mystery of your own self. It's asrari khudi. Everything that you experience is you. You are the experience. You are the experience. 
خیشتن را چون خودی بیدار کرد آشکارا عالم پندار کرد when you wake yourself up not somebody else wakes you up when you wake yourself up it is then that you become the person that would change yourself and change the world شم خود را همچون رومی برفروز illuminate and turn on your candle just like Maulana Rumi did روم را در آتش تبریز سوز and burn Rome with the fire of Tabriz هست معشوقی نهان اندر دلت چشم اگر داری بیا بن مایمت oh my friend you have a beloved it's inside yourself your beloved is inside yourself if you can't see it come I'll show it to you I'll show your beloved to you دلز عشق او توانا می شود and your heart from his love will get energy خاک هم دوشی سریا می شود and dirt will be as valuable as pleads like the stars خاک نجد از فیض او چالاک شد the dirt of nudged become priceless because of him صلی الله علیه و سلم آمدن در وجد و بر افلاق شد this dirt of nudge is came instead of wajd and reached the seven heaven and reached the seven heaven right Rumi says جسم خواب از عشق بر افلاق شد کوه در رقص آمد و چالاق شد this body made out of dirt it was love that made it go to the seven heaven it was love Mount, Mount Sinai start dancing and it's reset, it turned into dirt out of love. It was love. Noktei nuri kenomi uchudis, there's a dot inside of you. It's a dot of light, which we would call the dot of life. And he said, its name is Khudi. It's you. You are the dot of life. You are the light. Zir khaki ma sharar zindagiz. This is, we are, it's covered under the dirt of our body. It's covered under the dirt of our body. That's the problem. Rumi says, Bayat ke jumla jan shavi, ta layak ke janan shavi. You have to become all soul in order to be good enough for the beloved. Gar suyi mastan mi ravi, mastana shav, mastana shav. And if you're going to a place where everybody's intoxicated, become intoxicated, become intoxicated. And then he says, as mohabbat mi shawad payende tar, zende tar, suzende tar, tabende tar. And with love, you would remain forever. If you're a lover, you, and then you become alive. And then the fire of love is, start rekindling inside of you. And, and this is the thing about Mawlana Rumi and the fire of love. And this program is about the fire of love. That if, if you turn on the fire of love, and this is Rumi's message, uh, he said, Atash ishq, if the fire of love, and this is not a fire of, uh, there's two types of love. There's multiple types of love. One is a love of jismani, the love of things you can, you know, it's like you love this thing and that thing. And one is a love of Habib, right? The beloved, right? It's not jismani, it's not, it's not something you want. If anybody wants something from you, they don't love you. That's the, the, the basic of love. Lovers, they want to give every, they want to die for their beloved. They will give their life for them. If they're saying, oh, give me something and I love you, they don't love you if they want something from you. They don't. They're just trying to fool you. Lovers is about giving, not getting. Right? ایش آن شوله از کوچو برفروخت هرچی جز معشوق باقی جمله سوخت Love is a flame that if it starts inside of you it will annihilate everything inside of you and what remains is the beloved It will kill everything because they're all, they're all baggages that will drown you They're all baggages that will drown you Anyways There's so many lines but What's my time? <laughs> but here's the thing. This is my favorite line from Iqbal's Farsi poetry. 
نقمه من نقمه هم از زخمه بی پروازتم من نوای شاعر فرداستم I am the song I, I don't really need any instrument I'm not worried about the instrument right to, to have a, somebody play me and I'm the sound of tomorrow I'm the song of tomorrow I'm the message of tomorrow and this line it kills me every time because every poet this is their complaint my time they don't know asrar they don't know secret they don't know mystery they don't know they don't have value for things yusuf man bahr in bazar nist i have a yusuf how could i sell it on the street you know yusuf was sold for 20 dirham prophet joseph the most beautiful human being was sold for 20 dirham by his brothers This is the dunya. His brothers tortured him. His brothers threw him in the well. And then when Malik took him out of the well, what did he do? He said, he's our runaway slave. Give, us, give him back to us. He said, no, I got him from the well. He said, no, he's our runaway slave. We want to sell it to you. Give us 20 dirham. He said, here's your 20 dirham. Asraman don in the asrar nis. My time don't know. They don't have any value for anything. I have a Yusuf. I can't present it to this market. They're not worthy of it. They're not worthy of it. Look what they did to Yusuf. Iqbal said, Khun ke rishto mein agar hote muhabbat, Yusuf ne bekta misr ke bazaaron mein. If love relationship, is love was based on blood relation, then Yusuf wouldn't end up on the streets of Egypt for sale as a slave boy. And this is why they couldn't, this is why they wrote poems. Because they hid their message inside. And this is why you have to go deep into the poetry to get that message. What is Iqbal trying to teach us with these, with these lines? Aashikam faryat iman I'm a lover. And my faith is just shouting out these secrets and these mysteries. Maulana Rumi said, they said, what happened? That you got so intoxicated with the love of God. He said, Gusham Shanid, Nakme, Gusham Shanid, Kasay Imanu, Master. I just heard the story of faith and I became intoxicated. Just Iman. Just having Iman. People don't experience the sweetness of Iman. They don't. At the end of the day, that if you want to take something home, from, from tonight, one, thank you, sir. One is that Mawlana Rumi both and, and Iqbal, they are, they're trying to connect us to God. For us as believers, it's through Salah. The connection is through prayer. Right? As salat imad al deen. It's a central pillar of the religion. Inna salat al tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. Prayer by its nature gets you away from everything that's fahshai and munkar. Right? Through prayer. And this is, but they're teaching the prayer real prayer. Because there's two types of prayer. Right? One, you know, Iqbal said, Sajdai ishqo to ibadat me maza'atahi. If you do a prostration of love, it is then that you taste the sweetness of your worship. The world is filled with empty, meaningless prostration. Football players, they prostrate when they score a goal. Right? People get a promotion in their job, they prostrate. But he's saying the real prostration is when you do that prostration of love to God. لوگ کہتے ہیں کہ بس فرض ادا کرنا ہے ایسے لگتا ہے جیسے کوئی قرض ادا کرنا ہے پیپل سے ہم جسٹ ڈوئنگ مائی فارٹ مین بٹ اٹ سیم لائک دے آر دے آر ہیو اے ڈیٹ ٹو دا ڈیوائن دیٹ دے ہیو ٹو پے یو نو وین یو ہیو اے ڈیٹ یو کریڈٹ کارڈ یو ریلی ڈونٹ وانٹ ٹو پے یو ہیٹ پیئنگ دا ڈیٹ اینڈ دیٹس ہاؤ وی ڈو ود دا پریئر اینڈ اقبال سیڈ 
تیر سجده تی کهی تو جه کافر نکرده اقبال He said, oh, well, make sure that your sajda doesn't make you a disbeliever. To jokta ke hi or he sojta hai ke hi or. Because you're bowing down to someone physically, but spiritually you're thinking about somebody else. Our minds are somewhere else, our hearts are somewhere else, but our body is here. God does not need your body. Maulana Rumi said, ma dar namaz sajda ba didar mi barim. بیچاره آن که سجده به دیوار میبرند He said when we pray we see the vision of God and we pray towards the vision of God How devastated all these poor people who pray towards walls People who are praying towards walls and they see walls Because we're scattered We're not one And this is the message of Rumi Nepal They want to make you one Rumi said, Dui as khud birun kardam, yaki didam du alam ra. I removed dualism from myself and I saw both worlds as one. Yaki binam, yaki juyam, yaki khaham, yaki khanam. I see one, I seek one, I read one, I write one. It's all one. Who al awal, who al akhir, who al zahir, who al batin. Baghair as who we are, man who, the gar chizi, nemi dona. He's the first without a beginning, he's the last without an ending. He is the outwardly manifested. He is the inwardly hidden. And I don't know anything except that. That's all I know. And that's all you need to know. That's all you need to know. This is the first message of it. To connect you, be, make you one. Make you one. Not scattered. We're all scattered. We're everywhere. But Rumi and Iqbal say, no, no, become one. Become one. You can't have multiple qiblas. You have to have one qibla, one direction. You can. Rumi said a story about the, a thread that has two heads. You know when the threads break, they have two heads? He said you can't put it in the needle in the hole if you have two heads. You got to be one to go through the hole of the needle. Right? That's number one. And it's, I think that the essence of their teaching is to connect us with, with, uh, with that, with that. Prayer is at the essence of their teaching. And the reason why we pray in a way that we are scattered, the Qabal said, he said, Safi kaj dil puraishan sajda bi He said, your lines are all curved, you know, your anxiety in your heart when you're praying. And yet, there's, there's no love, there's no joy and love in your sajda. Because there is nothing in your inside in your heart. There's no burning, there's no yearning. Right? There's just nothing. The next one is about the greatness of the human being. And I think that that is what Rumi and Iqbal have the most in common, is that they invite people to come to the highest level of their nature. Because the default setting for us is that we want to go back to laziness, we want to go back to the lowest common denominator. This is, unfortunately, a lot of people go to the default setting. They say, no, you're greater than that. And Rumi, one thing about Mawlana Rumi, he's real about his teaching. He's real about his teaching. And he said, he said, oh human being, oh human being, I have done an evaluation of you. Right? I've done an evaluation of you. And here's my report. Right? When you buy a house, they do an evaluation how much this house is worth. They go through the good and bad of the house, he said, this is how much this house is worth, right? And he said, Tu ba qimmat warai har du jahan. Che konam qadr khud nemi dami. He said, oh my friend, oh human being, you are more expensive than the dunya and hereafter, the world and paradise put together. What a shame you don't know your own value. What a shame you don't know your own value. Taj karramna bar farqi sarat. He said, God has put the crown of nobility on your head. What does the Quran say? We have ennobled the children of Adam, the human race. There's a nobility to be a human being. 
Rumi says, you have a crown of nobility on your head. <coughs> and then the, the necklaces of pearls, the necklace of abundance of good, all of these things in the creation is for us. <coughs> Everything is for us and for our use. Everything. Rumi says, oh, look at you. Intellect is your slave. Comprehension, your slave. Imagination, your slave. All of them at your service. You can close your eyes right now and go to the moon if you want. You can close your eyes and go to Mecca. You can close your eyes, go home. You can close your eyes, do whatever you want. You can have your eyes open and go anywhere you want. It's at your service. Your imagination doesn't take you anywhere. You are in control of that. You're the master. They're all your slave. With all of this that God has given you, the intellect, the comprehension, imagination, all of that, the crown of nobility on your head, everything in the heavens and the earth for you and your use. With all of that, you're going to sell yourself so cheap? Right? That's it? And Allah Akbar, and we'll end with this, his famous line, he said, خدی کو کر بلند اتنا کہ ہر تقدیر سے پہلے خدا بندے سے خود پوچھے بتا تیرے رضا کیا ہے He said elevate yourself to a degree that before anything happens to you your destiny God asks you how do you want your destiny to be written What does that mean? We have ulama here and I don't want to talk about aqidah but what does that mean? Can you change your destiny? Of course not. Destiny is written. You can't change Qadr. It's written. But why is he saying that God is saying, I'll change it? Well, how, you, how do you want to be, your destiny to be written? This is what Allah Iqbal is saying, I think. Could be wrong. But this is what I think he's saying. You should elevate yourself to a degree that you're so close and you, have, you love God so much that when God asks you, how would you like your destiny to be written? There's a pen and tablet. And then you would say, I love you so much, I'm happy exactly the way you wrote it. I don't want any changes. A believer, if he or she is in the shade, they don't want to be in the sun. If they're in the sun, they don't want to be in the shade. I'm happy exactly how you wrote it because I love you. And love, lovers, they, they don't want any changes. Literally, they don't want any changes. Right? They don't. They're happy in anything that comes from the beloved. It doesn't matter what it is. Majnoon was in love with Layla. Ashiq, he lost his sanity. His name is Qais from Bani Amir, right? He became Majnoon, madman, for Layla. And one day he's passing by the castle of Layla, and Layla is in her room with her hair flowing and doing the whole catwalk inside the house, knowing that he's walking, you know, not paying any attention. Sisters do that all the time, just kidding. And uh, so he's like, man, how can I get her attention? So he goes to people and goes, what does Layla like? So oh, Layla, the only thing she likes is rubies. He said, really? And he was from Bani Amr, rich man. He goes, gets a lot of wealth. He goes to the city. He said, who has the biggest ruby? He said, we do. Buys the ruby, brings it. Layla is walking by the window, you know, sees this man from the corner of the eye, sees everything. Puts the ruby on the table. Layla is watching. Gets the sledgehammer. <laughs> smashes the ruby into pieces. And Layla comes to the window and goes, you idiot, why did you do that? And he goes, that's why. So you can see, oh, idiot, why did you do that? I just wanted to hear your voice. I don't care what you say. This is lovers. I don't care what you do with me. I don't care how you write my destiny. I don't care if you give me pain. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're piercing through me all the time. It doesn't matter because I know at the end it's all good. I know it's all for my good. I know you're not unjust. I know you're not an unjust God. I know you're doing that for my good. I know that. So it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want, and I don't want you to change it, because I love you. 
Stay exactly the way you are. And this is the highest maqam, right? Where you, you know, you learn the concept of just being pleased with the decisions that has already happened, that has already been ordained, right? And one of the Urdu poets said, Kalrat ur rahi ti sitare hawa ke saad aur me udas beta ta apne khuda ke saad kya tu qabooliyat ke tareeqe se kaam mujhe ya mere dil ko bandh de apne raza ke saad He said that I was sitting in at night and I was watching the stars you know these are good moments that people are deprived from now they don't see the stars anymore you know city light they put up this put out the stars and he said I said ya Allah either teach me that I accept things. Whatever comes to me, that I, I, can, I can be able to just, you know, I accept it. Or this rida, put that in my heart. Then I'm pleased with your decision. Either I accept it or I'm pleased. It's one of the two options that we have. The lowest is to accept it, the highest is to be pleased with whatever comes. And that's at the essence of Mawlana Rumi and Allah Iqbal is to elevate us to a higher degree to conquer ourselves. And we'll end with a, with a poem from Allama Iqbal that I think that if Pakistanis practice this, they will solve all their problems. Imran Khan might be the solution, but I think Iqbal is a better solution. If Afghanis practice it, it will solve Afghanistan problem. If the Syrian practice it, if the Iraqis practice it, if the Mauritanians, if Anybody, Egyptian, whoever practices this line, it solves all our problems. Because we cannot change anybody. You can't. You can't change your children. You can't. Try to change your children. You can't. You can't change your spouses, your family. You can't change anybody. You can't change your city. You can't change your country. There's no way you can change your country or change the world. But Iqbal said, there's a way you can do it. He said, Tere khudi mein agar inqilab ho paida, ajab nahi hai ke chafsu badal jahe. That if you do an internal revolution within yourself, then it is possible that your surrounding will change. Your countries will change. Your nations will change. The world will change if you change. But as long as we are like this, nothing will change. And Rumi said, oh my friend, please do not aim low to go out and say, I want to change the world. What a low ambition to say, I'm going to change the world. Be a human being and aim high and say, I'm going to change the universe inside myself. That is the great change. And this is why all of the slogan is, I'm going to change the world because the world is very small in compared to the universe that you have inside of yourself. And if you can do that, you will create a rose garden within the fire of the world and you will live a happy life and that's what the purpose of life is what sa'ada to be happy and may allah make us amongst the people of happiness inshallah